All right, welcome to the show today. Today I have Dirk Schwindling on the show, and he is the CEO of Suketa Switzerland. Very excited to have you here because of our last conversation. Very interesting to hear some of the stories of what you guys are doing right now in terms of leadership, talent. Um, super excited about this conversation today. But before we go into these topics, I want to know a little bit more about you. I want everybody to know a little bit more about you. So, uh, Dirk, first of all, welcome. And um, can you share a couple of insights into your own story um, that got you to where you are today? Yes, thank you very much for the invitation for today. My name is Dirk Schwindling. I'm 48 years old. I'm in the point of sale business since 95. Started in Germany as a sales guy. After six year military service in Germany, uh, started my career in the IT business for a software company. This company was uh, present in the German language market in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And I started the expansion process for them in, uh, in the uh, Spanish market, in the French market and so on. And since 2001, I'm an employer of TC Post uh, Germany, started in 2001. We founded the company in 2001 in Germany with the idea to establish the TC Post product in the German market with uh, big customers like Mercedes-Benz, Bosch, Siemens, and so on. Later on, I took over a little bit more responsibility in TC Post Group for uh, Switzerland and Austria and Eastern Europe. And since seven years, we are part of Zucchetti Group an Italian IT company founded 40, 42 years ago from uh, Domenico Zucchetti. Founder is still present as a consultant and the company today is leaded by uh, Alessandro Zucchetti and Christina, the daughter and son from Mino Zucchetti. Uh, last two, three years, we are actively uh, transforming the company, the old TC Post company in a new Zucchetti company. It's the kind of transformation really to adapt uh, the DNA, the original one from TC Post across country with the German culture, with the Swiss culture, Austria, France, and so on. Really to find the best way to combine these uh, two DNAs from uh, the original from TC Post and the Zucchetti uh, with the whole team. That means also we started new business, new business units, not only point of sales, also uh, ERP, HR, uh, access control management system for public and non-public. So that's a big challenge from a culture point of view, but also from a, from a knowledge point of view. So we are uh, in, still in this process and this process will continuously go further and further. It's not uh, really a, a, a project for 12 months. This is a project uh, for every day. I love, I love that introduction. I love that you're diving right into the transformation topic. So I'm gonna, gonna pick up on that. Talk to me about the transformation. Talk to me a little bit about what are some of the key challenges when you talk, you talk about culture, people, merge, basically. You talk about combining DNA. What are like at the essence, at the very granular level, what are some of the really biggest challenges on the table? I think first of all, you have to understand the original culture, the original roots from the teams. So without this knowledge, you can never transform a team because it's not really, you can, you can cover the old DNA with a new one because you have to understand the, the original culture. You have to explain them the original culture from, from, the, from the other company. And then you have to find and define together with them the new strategy and culture together. So you have a high level identification from the whole team, from the old and new one. And uh, you, can, you can really uh, bring this project uh, on, on, the real, on the real table. This is, that, this is the biggest challenge. I love that. So let's talk a bit more quantifiable. I'm really curious about like, how do you, how do you understand the roots of a culture like how do you and, and and what are some of the and how do you then know that you understand the actual roots of the culture like yeah i guess we're talking measurements now but you know in a in a in a, in a topic that is very um 
non tangible in that sense. So how do you how do you how do you know how how do you try to understand it, and how do you know that you understand it? Okay, I I did the same process for myself. I was part of a, of a German company. Then I started my career in TCPOS and we acquired this German company. So I had the knowledge from my old team and I had to bring them in, in the new one. And with Zucchetti, we have quite the same story. Uh, TCPOS founded in 1991 in Switzerland. Over the years become more global and then uh, finally part of Zucchetti Group. So my original roots is point of sale uh, brand in Germany. So I, I did quite the same, the same process like the other guys. So, and you can easily find out if you really find the right challenge for communication with them to really to exchange information. You know, you have two kinds of, of, of conversation. One is really to understand the words. And the, the second possibility to, for conversation is to give them answers. But first of all, first of all you have to understand. Without understanding, the conversation become difficult. I love that. Um, I love that point about understanding because I think it's so easy to jump into answering and it's so easy to jump into solutions, but it's much harder to spend the effort and time on the understanding because it takes patience and it takes, and sometimes it's painful because it takes a long time and a lot of questions and a lot of different questions and a lot of reframing of questions. So this is, um, this is I, I love that you're staying on that, on that point there. Now let's talk about um, the transformation itself in terms of the, the, the process or uh, what, you're, what you're doing right now. You mentioned some interesting things that we talked about last time. Maybe you can share some of the, some of the approaches that you use in order to, on the one side, understand, better understand, and on the one on the other side to 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 lead the transformation in a way that it's not um you know in a way that it's actually ending up into a you know in a, in a brighter future in that sense the identification of my role in the beginning of the transformation from tcpos to zucchetti was more i saw my role a little bit coming like an ambassador the first period I was often there in, in our Italian headquarter really to understand uh, Zucchetti company and Zucchetti background and Zucchetti people be because at the end it is people business. Products are important, but at the end we are a team uh, of more than 6,000 people now in different countries, different products, different uh, uh, skills from the people and different ages. So, the first step was really to understand Zucchetti and also the DNA uh, of Zucchetti. And I had also a really interesting and important one-to-one uh, -one meeting with the founder, with Mino Zucchetti. So it was also for me possible really to understand uh, the idea of Zucchetti 40 years, 42 years ago. And then with the knowledge of TCPOS, I was more a human interface between cultures. Uh, I was the human interface coming from Germany in a Swiss company with a new Italian owner. So it was quite challenging, but interesting. And also to, to, to build more and more your inner circle to really to enlarge the level of information, invite the people uh, for their input, because input is important. You can never uh, make good decisions without the right input. So now is uh, we have still our original roots TCPOS, but in a new reality in, in a Zucchetti. And this is a little bit also the reality of the whole Zucchetti group. And, uh, and day by day, you have really to, to ask yourself, you are on the, on the right point. Uh, you have to modify a little bit your direction. Uh, you have to invite new people, younger people. Really important to have also the young people on board because experience is important but it's not the only key you need also to have another perspective from from younger people with other skills with different uh, cultural background and so if you have all the cards on the table then from a leader perspective you are able to take good decisions 
So talk to me a bit about the combination of generations and different backgrounds and cultures of people. How do you, in, inside of the organization, especially when there's a lot of diversity, it becomes obviously more tricky to bring everybody on the same page, right? So there's a lot more that's required to make sure everybody's really glued to the core. How do you go about that? How do you ensure that people feel part of the journey, like everybody feels part of the journey, that everybody gets a voice or feels that they really you know, have, have, have an influence in the stake and are truly engaged in the process? Okay. Uh, it was uh, a continuously activity to explain all the people the vision and all the, the the background information from 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 TC Parts and also to Ketty. Then to identify the right people, uh, copy the ambassador activity. So in 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 several levels, not only in the country management level, you have to invite all the people really to be part of these uh, ambassador activities. And so stay in a, in a, in touch with them use all the communication channels, uh, all these uh, WhatsApp, email, personal communication, uh, continuously exchange information to video calls one or two times per year, or to personal meetings, define together content of agendas with them, interesting points, because the, the old style idea from, from leading was you are alone, on a, on a high, high level and take decisions without the, the, the wisdom and without the, all the knowledge from all your structure. And this picture will be, will be changed continuously because now my role, I see my role more than I'm, I'm a, the guy with the vision, but I have to invite all the people how we can really realize this vision in real business because at the end, we all the all the measuring is uh, is based on figures on business on business on business development, and you have to find the right balance. Do the business, find the right people, uh, combine people business with the with the products with the customers. So our 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 claim grow your core is not only an internal view, not only view of the team is or is also meaning products and also meanings meanings together with our customers and partners so core can mean hard core can mean it core software core it's more a general a general description of of our daily goal we have to grow day by day talk to me about that again because that's how initially i approached you about grow your core because i was super curious about what that means what that means to you and what that means to you and basically, you know, the way you lead an organization. So talk to me more about that. What, what is it just to you as a person, basically now, uh, let's focus on you as a person, really. What does it mean? Like, what does growing your core mean to you as a person, as a leader? To live with the new leadership model, shared responsibility, uh, change or transform the idea from micromanagement in macromanagement, set together clear objectives, but it's also behind all this, the story is also serious business behind. So define clear objectives together, let the people live with the, with the right responsibility. Not every decision is the 100% right one, but we have also to live with decisions not probably 100% the right one. And uh, so create a high level identification in each decision. It's not a decision made by, by a manager or by a team leader. It's a, a common decision. So where all the people in the organization had the possibility to give the right input and to be part of this decision. So it's a little bit changed the leadership model of the whole organization. So I want to hook into something very specific there, which is about responsibility and people being responsible and being responsible about whatever it is that they're engaged in, basically. So it may be a project, it may be, you know, uh, 
uh, an activity or an initiative or whatever, whatever they're responsible for, basically. Um, how do you make sure that people take the, like the, the level of responsibility that you want them to take? Like, how do you, how do you get people so engaged in this, I guess this is the question, that people truly feel that they're in charge and that they, so that they can, I think two sides. One side is that they feel in charge in terms of they're allowed to make decisions, you know, in that, and they, they are not only allowed, they're encouraged to make a lot of these decisions, maybe all of them, and that they feel accountable to the actual responsibility. How do you, how do you make that work? Okay, here you have, to, you have the theory and the reality. Uh, it's a simple answer, try and error. Invite them, let them do, and uh, I'm, I'm often, I'm going really, I'm, I'm, I'm going to refuse request for me with the answer, I'm not in charge of this decision. Take your decision and probably you can ask me for an input or for an, 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 an hint. I'm always available, 724, that's uh, also my job. And so it's, uh, it's more an automatic way where you can easily identify the right people. This was also the idea from our, from our young generation board. It was a simple idea how we can bring young people on board to be part of the uh, strategy of our company. So the simple idea was invite younger people. It was a, a soft invitation with soft skills like uh, not more than 35 years old, not, not longer in the company than five years, but not really fixed the uh, rules. And so we, we've got uh, 18 valid applications with the, also the content was completely free. The content was the, the question, we had three questions. What could be your contribution for the, for the strategy? Why you are the right person? And so all the applications with the great content. And uh, so now we have a, a wider group with five members of the young generation board. And all the rest, they are influence of this young generation board. Without value, the member are uh, on a higher level than the influencers. So it's today also the communication. If you see all the social media activities, influencing an, an topic is uh, important also uh, to have your own opinion, to, to be able to communicate your opinion, but also to find the right people, uh, they, the people which are able to give you a an, an contribution for these activities. So today we have really a, a really a valid team, 18 young people, and we can share decisions or proposals for decisions with them, give them tasks, and, and we have really excellent results with them. I, I love making... I love what you said about the content, I guess is what, what you use as a word. Basically, you know, the, the questions that you've been answering um, that are basically the responses are content. So it needs to be rich content in a sense. You know, people need to really share specifically um, or create their own contribution to it. They're already creating that role within the board through the questions by answering them, basically. So I, I, I really love that. And I want to take that in an operational context, meaning, okay, there's maybe a client project, okay? So there's a client project on the table. It's relatively clear what needs to be done. And um, there's a lot of stuff that's already there. It's already developed. In such an environment, which is very operational um, and less creative in that sense, um, how do you dare make sure that people create their own role i guess or create you know create their own content that they bring in so they feel truly connected to what they um to, to what they will be doing at the end of the day um how do you how do you how do you do that in a very operational like a client project for example here we have uh, three important parts first of all you have to involve them when you are creating rules processes procedures you have to improve all these procedures and rules day by day. And the third important part is we have so a big impact, B 
big impact from the market, from new technologies, from partner involved, third parties, uh, suppliers, other products. So that is uh, really, that is the, I think for the future, this is the nature of our daily work to really to be, to be flexible, all these new methodologies, Scrum, Agile, it will become more and more our nature. We, we have to be flexible to be able to modify day by day your rules because you, you cannot fix or create fixed rules for each activity is not possible. You have to be a little bit flexible. Let them the space to follow uh, a long-term goal. And the goal is to realize um, uh, successful projects together with the customer and partners. But it's not important to define 100 uh, single steps. The, common, the, scope, the important scope should be clear for all of us. And of course, we have to respect uh, rules, rules by law, GDPR, data privacy, but you have to also let them space to, to, to be creative and also to, Im to improve uh, day by day also the procedures because a procedure defined two years ago probably is not more the right one for today. I, lo I, lo I love that distinction because you know, I, I always feel it's very easy to talk about all the creative stuff when it comes to giving people freedom and decision making because it's by design very new, right? And very fresh. So you, hope you get people in that are by design going to bring their own perspective. And I think sometimes it's a little bit different talking in a very operational, like hardcore structured environment. And how do you, how do you, how do you really empower people or enable people or, or, or allow people to bring in um, what they want to bring in and allow them to feel truly engaged. So basically, what I'm hearing is there's there's always structures that are in place. There's always rules. That's normal. But um, keep it at just what's necessary, basically. Um, and then below that, um, just understand what what is the true objective, what is really the outcome, and 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 leave it at that, so to say, and have the person fill the void with with their own being, with their own creation, even in the most operational environment. So totally love that, totally love that. Now I want to take one step before this, meaning hiring people, bringing people on board. Um, how do you, maybe let's start with how do you find the right people? Like are there specific, and we can be super tactical here, um, are there specific channels that work for you? Are there like, you know, do you just do everything through job boards or do you, do you, do you invite your best friends to join you in the comment? Like, you know, very tactical. I'd be super interested in that. And then as a second step, um, how do you know before working with somebody that it's a good idea to work with them? <laughs> okay. Uh, me personally, I mean, I'm day by day in a hiring process, 724 hours. So it is uh, not important to find the people with the, with the full CV of theory of activities. Of course, high skilled people are important, but it's not the only key. So, and, and then you have in a, really in the early stage, you have a feeling, you have a feeling uh, this person will be really highly motivated, brings an, an, a value in your team and your company. And then you have also a little bit to try with them. You can never have the, the, to be sure that these people or this person will be the right person to be a new member of the team. And also what we, what we are doing also is that during a hiring process, uh, we, we are hiring, for example, a new person for development. We do the normal hiring process with the, with the CDO, and at the end, we do, we do a final interview with our uh, culture ambassador. This lady is completely out of development team. And this lady is doing an, an more an interview on a personal level to, to more, a little bit more about the person. Because today is important that you have the right skills, but not only the, the, the skills for the software, for 
for methodology, etc., et you need also have the right human skills. Because if you have, uh, if the human interface will not work, then can never be the, the right member of the team. So it's the, uh, it's eighty percent is feeling. For to to take the decision, the final decision, and twenty percent is uh, standard rules. Okay. And I, I and I, yeah. I personally often did the hiring in in really in in uh, in crazy situations at the gym. In the fashion store, when I when I had a conversation with a really uh, smart guy, and I've asked them, "What is your background?" Yeah, I, I'm work, I'm worked uh, some years in the hotel and uh, in the hotel business, and I have and I have asked him, "And what about your idea for the future?" Yeah, I'm here to do my job because my 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 girlfriend is from this region, and I asked them asked them to if this guy is interested to make a career in the IT business, more in the hotel environment, like uh, selling PMS or do project management. So it's a uh, feeling. You see the right people and then build your circle. I love that. I'm always hiring 24 <laughs> seven. I like that. I like that a lot. It's, um, I like that so much because it goes away from the, oh, we have a need to fill a position let's fill the position it goes into everywhere it's it's different because now it's it's about everywhere is opportunities and it's much more valuable to harvest the opportunities than to fill positions or fill holes in the organization so i love 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 that um and another one, sorry yeah, one, yeah one important point so if you today you are hiring a new person that means also this is uh, in both directions this person will also select a new place to be for the future. And if you see your work life and your, and, and your lifetime and how many hours day by day you will spend with your team, with your company, then it's also an important decision. And you have to think also in this way to be attractive as a team, as a human team, as company, uh, a space to grow, uh, a, a space to be sure for your life, for your family, for your, for your background. It's an important message from our founder, Minu Zucchetti. Minu said, if we make an employee contract with someone, it's not only to pay a salary, we take over all the responsibility for his life. So this is also to live with this kind of responsibility. So your horizon to hire new people is a little bit different than only to sign a contract, an employee contract, and to pay them salary month by month. It's a little bit more. I love that more holistic view. Um, yeah, 100% agree. More specifically, what I want to talk about, uh, one aspect is, are there certain attitudes, characteristics, personality traits that are just through the board important? Um, for you when you're hiring? Is there something that, or are there some specific things that really stand out? Not really, because uh, all, all the people, all the person, they are really individuals. So uh, we, we have to live with, uh, really in a positive meaning, with the complete crazy nerds, without daylight, uh, 24 hours in office, writing code. We have to live with the creative people, always try to do something new and we have to mix them in a good way and find a good balance and a good combination. So Great. if not, if not, you have only soldiers, but this is not really the, the goal of our daily doing. That's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting comparison. Now I want to talk about another topic, which very often is more challenging to talk about because we talked about hiring. And now I want to talk about firing because but what if, what, what, what if um, you know, you understand and notice that after a couple of months, this just either isn't a good fit for some reason, you, you, you notice it's just not working out from a personal point of view, or that um, things just going so off track in terms of what is it, whatever, performance or uh, the job itself or any of these things. What do you do? I mean, we don't have to talk about firing and okay, we're letting them go. No, it's much more than that, of course. So 
what do you do in a situation where you see, okay, after two or three months, it's not moving, it's not going the right direction, and you see, okay, it may not actually be working out in the right way we, we thought about. Uh, give them feedback day by day. So exchange or, and feedback is, is, is also in both directions. So you need also the feedback from these people. And to be honest, if, if your feeling is really serious, does, does not fit this, uh, this member of my team, let them know. And also here, you have to, you have to decide uh, for the future, for the company, and also for, for these people. This is not really uh, nice, but at the end, it's also the job of a leader to give a an, an really an serious feedback and, and let them the chance also uh, to take another direction in, the, in their life. I, I'm often... Uh, found myself in situations so it was from a human point of view it was really heavy to take decisions especially in a in a process where you have really to communicate people uh, you have to leave the company and so uh, what what i do i i try really to mirroring this kind of situation what i'm really expecting for myself and and try and i try to do uh, the same for, for the people. And I, what I do with my management team, I explain them my point of view. At the end, you have to f you find your own way, a little bit your own taste also. But in, in decisions like this, hiring and firing is really, to be honest, to be clear, a clear message. Probably it's not comfortable, but at the end, you have a clear direction. So, yeah, that's all right. I I love the point about honesty and, and, and about the point that it's about the value of the company and the value of the person because it doesn't help anyone, you know, to continue in a non-ideal situation. And just the, the, the feedback, which is not the feedback once per year, <laughs> but the feedback basically every single day. I love that. A huge, huge difference from how most companies run and, 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 and basically uh, are, are managed. So this is... Um, this is great. I got the last question, which is a lot more up in the air, a lot more up in the sky. So let's imagine yourself, you're, you're 80 years old now, you're sitting in your rocking chair and, you know, you're, you're, you're looking back at your life and you think, you know, some of the great moments, some of the tough moments, but you're just looking at your life holistically. What is, what is sort of the, the, the impact or maybe the change that you um, would really want to, to have had? over that you know, past lifetime or past many years there? It's really easy to answer. I have only one goal, to let really a good legacy, more from an emotional point of view, not really value like, uh, I don't know, apartments, boats, cars. I, I love that, that uh, kind of things. But let a good legacy for all the people, family, friends, employees, partners, so when I, when I, one day I found myself in, a, in this kind of situation, it's also really independent from the age, 50, 60, 70, let always a good legacy, lead by example, that's not so easy also uh, to be a good example every day. Show also a little bit your weakness because nobody from us is perfect. And, and so that it's, uh, that's a good thing. I love that. I love that you're so clear on that, um, which is, of course, where a lot of your drive is coming from. So uh, I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much, Dirk. I really appreciate you having, having you here, sharing and sharing so in-depth. So uh, thank you so much for sharing and being here. And uh, we're going to link to uh, you know, your LinkedIn profile below the video so people can also connect with you. Um, because I know you're hiring 24 seven. So <laughs> that's always a good, a good thing. Right. So, um, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you very much.